Hey, what is going on all you bust nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. For as long as human beings have existed, we've always needed a way to get from point A to point B. At first, there wasn't really much of a choice. I mean, back in the Stone Ages, our ancient ancestors either walked or they stayed in one place. I mean, it's not like they had any options or anything. I guess you could ride a dinosaur. Anyway, as our species progressed and learned to work smarter, not harder, we started developing different methods to get us from point A to point B without having to use our own two feet. But as much as some of us take for granted the freedom to walk, there are those amongst us who simply don't have the ability to use their own two feet. Those that require the assistance of a mobility device, such as a wheelchair or electric scooter, in order to get around. Now today, in many developed countries and municipalities, there are all kinds of building codes and regulations that require public infrastructure to be able to accommodate those that are wheelchair-bound. Things like sidewalks that have low-grade ramps, buildings with stairs, also including wheelchair ramps next to the stairs for entry, automatic opening doors to allow a person in a wheelchair easier access, as well as buses with wheelchair and accessible entry and capacity. In the transportation industry here in the U.S., the abbreviation ADA stands for American with Disability Act, which refers to the civil rights law passed in the U.S. back in the 1990s that prohibits discrimination to Americans with disabilities. All of this information, by the way, is sourced from Wikipedia, in which I will provide a link down below in case any of you want to find out more for yourselves. But in today's video, we're going to take a closer look at just how buses and motor coaches in North America are able to accommodate those who require a wheelchair to get around. Just what does it take for a bus and motor coach to be able to take on a wheelchair or ADA passenger? Today in North America, specifically US and Canada, all city transit agencies operate low floor transit buses. Unlike the older city transit buses before the start of the early 90s, the first low floor city bus was introduced into the United States in 1991. The bus was a new flyer low floor D40LF, and the first city transit agency to receive it was none other than the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Prior to all that, buses in the US were high floor buses, which meant that the passenger deck was built higher in order to fit the axle and drivetrain under the passenger deck. This meant that prior to low floor buses, all passengers boarding a bus had to climb several steps in order to board the vehicle. A low floor bus is a bus where the passenger deck is low enough to almost be flush with the height of most curbs and sidewalks so that passengers can board the bus without climbing any steps. Now, in order to achieve all this, all low floor buses are designed with independent front suspension systems, which means that there is no axle that goes across between the two front wheels, as well as being rear wheel driven, so that the drivetrain did not have to span the length of the bus. With the front axle and drivetrain no longer crossing the width and the length of the bus, this meant that the floor of the bus could now be built as low as the bottom of the bus frame, because there were simply no longer anything that the deck of the bus needed to cover up. Well, when it came to ADA passengers, this also meant that there was no longer a need for a lift or elevator of any kind to raise the passenger up to the floor of the bus so that they could board. All that was really needed was a ramp that could unfold outward that allowed the wheelchair to roll over the gap between the bus and the curbside. But when it came to the motor coach world, things still weren't as simple. You see, even though most modern coach buses also have front independent suspension systems, as well as rear wheel drive, motor coaches require an additional compartment that city transit buses are not built with. And that, my friends, is luggage space. With the passenger decks for most motor coaches built on top of the luggage base, sitting between four to six feet above the ground, a simple fold out ramp for a wheelchair to roll on just wouldn't work. I mean, the ramp would be so steep that a wheelchair or electric motorized chair would just have a hard time climbing up or getting down safely. For most motor coaches in the US, the boarding process of an ADA passenger is a much more complex procedure that requires a significant amount of additional training for the driver to ensure the safety of the passenger and the equipment. In order for a coach to be able to carry an ADA passenger, a ADA lift must first be installed. 
Along with the lift, an additional entryway must also be cut out of the side of the bus for the lift to service, as there's simply not enough room for a lift to be installed on the main entryway of a coach bus. In North America, there are two very trusted companies that specialize in creating ADA accessibility lifts for vehicles, Braun and Rikon. Now, on top of motor coaches, both of these companies also provide ADA lift options for school buses, conversion vans, and even personal vehicles. Having worked in the motor coach industry since 2007, I'm not sure if I've ever heard of any other major players when it comes to building wheelchair lifts for buses, but if I've left out any major manufacturers or players as far as wheelchair lifts, please be sure to let me know down in the comment box below. I would be very interested to know if there are any more lift options for buses out there. Just like buying a car, a boat, or even a house, buying a motor coach will come with a lot of different options. The more options you add to the coach bus, the more it's going to add to the price tag. Unlike city buses, which are paid for by the cities and states that operate them, motor coaches in North America are almost all privately owned, which means that no one else is going to help the owner pay for stuff. The coach bus companies, just like any other privately owned businesses here in North America, needs to be able to make more money than it spends, otherwise it'll shut down. So when it comes to buying a bus that's going to come with a price tag of over half a million dollars, the privately owned motor coach company is gonna have to think a lot harder about adding a lot of options on board. Now at this point, you might be asking, James, just how much does an ADA lift cost? Well, around $40,000. Now, I don't think that includes the cost of cutting a giant hole on the side of your shiny new bus and mounting an additional ADA service door. I mean, would I want all of my buses to have wheelchair lifts on them? If I were human, I believe my response would be, hell yeah, but unfortunately, that's not the case. I can say that Peoria Charter by August of 2022 will have around seven ADA lift equipped motor coaches in our fleet. But at $40,000 per coach times 50 coaches, that comes out to be... It will take the computer a few moments to compile the information. I know I'm Chinese, but I still suck at math. That comes out to be about $2 million. Now, that's a lot of money. And as a business owner, unless you know you're gonna be making $2 million back, it's kind of hard to just spend that kind of cash. Just like any other machine you purchase, whether it's a dishwasher or a motor coach, you're going to also have to spend money to keep it working. And when it comes to the wheelchair lifts, they do take a lot of maintenance. I mean, if you own a bus company and you have a bus with a wheelchair lift, the last thing you want to happen when you show up to pick up your passengers who booked your bus to take them out for an adventure is to have your wheelchair lift malfunction after your group has already requested one. Peoria Charter spends a lot of resources making sure that these lifts are properly maintained and that our drivers are properly trained in operating these things. And it's not always easy. In fact, these motor coach lifts are very complex. On a motor coach, depending on the make and model of coach bus you buy, some of these lifts are mounted midship or in the middle of the coach, as some would say. In which case, the lift, when stowed or not being used, retracts into a compartment where a luggage bay would usually be. The midship lift design takes away valuable luggage space, so to counter it, other make and models of motor coaches build these lifts on the rear of the coach. When not used, these rear mounted lifts stow back into a space between the engine compartment and the wheel well. Now, all these lifts are hydraulic powered, and if you ever get a chance to take a peek of what these things look like behind the controls, you'll find that there are lots of computer chips and circuit boards back there that control the lifts. Now, over time, these lifts are subjected to a lot of vibration and temperature and climate variations. And that's when all of those sensitive computer chips in the lift starts to fail. I mean, imagine leaving your laptop mounted under the hood of your car for two years and then turning it on one day to see if it's gonna work properly. Now, from experience, I will say that the rear mounted lifts deteriorate a lot faster than those that are mounted in the luggage compartment in the middle of the coach. I mean, luggage bays are sealed a bit better and keep the lifts and electronics out of the element compared to the coaches that keep the lifts in the rear compartment where they're pretty much exposed to all the salt, moisture, heat, and freezing conditions all year round. But again, that is a lot of valuable luggage space that many bus companies can't afford to lose. 
especially if you have a line run or commuter service or handle a lot of airport transfers. On top of maintenance, these lifts can also be a bit tricky to use. At Pure Charter, all of our drivers are required to be trained on operating these wheelchair lifts before going out on a trip to service an ADA passenger. But even with training, these lifts can be extremely quirky and cause a lot of problems. For one, if the lift is not on completely level ground, the bottom flap of the lift will just simply not lower, which will not allow the ADA passenger to be able to roll onto the platform. Now, I get the safety concept of building them that way, but I'm talking about even on a slight incline of an entryway of a parking lot or some of those street side dips for drainage. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, considering that buses pick up their passengers along a street side 99% of the time, one would think that an engineer would take that into consideration when making a lift not function properly because the sensors were designed for a completely flat surface. Also, there's a safety feature on these lifts where if the lift is deployed and the ADA door is open, the bus will simply not go into gear. I mean, that's a great safety feature. I totally agree with doing it that way. Well, one of those sensors go bad, even with the lift completely stowed and secured, the coach will simply not go into drive. And then you have a bunch of stranded passengers sitting there. Another issue is that some of these lifts are built with a really high pitch, ear splitting beeping sound when the driver is operating it. driving not only the ADA passenger insane, but the rest of the passengers on the coach as well. I mean, all of these factors put together can really make it look like that the driver is not properly trained on the operation of the lift. But in fact, it's just, in my opinion, an over-engineered, over-complicated system. By now, if you're still watching the video, you guys have probably picked up a bit of frustration on my part when it comes to these ADA lifts for motor coaches. From my own experience, they are overly expensive, they don't hold up very well, they cost a lot to fix, and they are way over-engineered, creating a lot of problems for the operator and ADA passengers that need them. Now guys, I know I'm not the only one that feels this way about ADA lifts. I've heard a lot of other operators talk about them, and also in 2017, Motor Coach Industries came out with the D45 CRT coach bus, which completely did away with any use of the makeshift elevator that can be shoved into the side panel of a coach bus, which is basically what an ADA lift is. The D45 CRT, which has a huge presence in the commuter coach sector, offers a low entry section in the middle of the coach to allow easy entry for boarding mobility devices using a simple ramp like those found on city transit buses. The low floor section can be accessed via a staircase to the high floor section for those riding on the coach. The only drawback is the removal of over 70% of the coach's luggage bay space, rendering it kind of ineffective to accommodate passengers who are bringing a lot of luggage with them on their trip. Now, there are luggage bays available on the D45 CRT. However, they are only accessible on the left side or street side of the bus, making loading and unloading luggage a bit more dangerous because you're not performing the task in traffic. Another coach bus that has been in the US market for quite a while now that also alleviates the ADA lift is the Double Decker Van Hool TD925. Since the first deck of the Double Decker bus is basically built on the same level of where the luggage bays would usually be, the coach is basically a low floor coach. At least the first floor of it is. The luggage space on these Double Decker coaches is pushed back to a small closet that is located behind the first deck of the passenger cabin, but is extremely limited, even though the coach can now hold up to 81 passengers. I hope they all travel light. But because the first deck of the TDX925 is built so low to the ground, the rear entry door of the coach can be fitted with a simple ADA ramp, similar to that of a city transit bus. Now in the makings of today's video, I wanted to give a shout out to Chris from Bus TV Chan. Bus TV Chan is a YouTube channel that's all about buses, with a lot of awesome footage that I borrowed some for today's video. Also, I wanted to give a shout out to Northwest Bus Sales as well as Las Vegas Bus Sales as I borrowed some of their sales footage on their YouTube channel as well. Be sure to go check out these guys. I'll have their links down in the description box below. Well, anyway, I hope you guys learned something about ADA lifts today and why the motor coach industry kind of struggles with them a little bit. I mean, when you're trying to maximize the amount of space in a giant moving box on wheels, you really only have so much space to play with. So 
Hopefully one day someone will come up with a really good strategy on how to maximize luggage space and allow easier entry for ADA passengers onto a motor coach. Well folks, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And as always, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.